Refeeding syndrome is a metabolic condition that typically occurs in individuals receiving nutritional therapy through oral, anterior or parenteral nutrition after a period of severe malnutrition. Hallmarks of refeeding syndrome include electrolyte shifts such as hypophosphatemia, hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia. Vitamin deficiencies, especially vitamin B1 also known as thiamine fluid imbalances and salt retention. Such shifts may lead to impaired organ function and cardiac arrhythmias. Although refeeding syndrome is associated with severe and potentially life-threatening complications, it is a preventable condition. Refeeding syndrome is caused by the sudden introduction of glucose after a prolonged state of starvation. Refeeding syndrome is resulted by rapid switch from catabolic to anabolic pathways. When energy intake is low, the body is mostly in catabolic state, breaking down glycogen, body proteins and fat to create what it needs to survive. When an individual in this state starts eating again or receives nutritional therapy in a hospital setting, glucose levels increase rapidly and a large amount of insulin is released to push the glucose into the cells. This causes a demand for phosphate and other electrolytes in the cells and results in sudden electrolyte shifts, leading to hypophosphatemia, hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia. In addition, there is a shift of sodium out of the cell as potassium is pumped back into cells via the sodium-potassium pump. As a result, sodium concentrations increase leading to fluid retention. Dear viewers, the signs and symptoms of refeeding syndrome depend on the severity of the electrolyte imbalances. Since phosphate, potassium and magnesium are all important intracellular ions, their deficiency may lead to muscle weakness, seizures, rhabdomyolysis, impaired respiratory function, cardiac arrhythmias, peripheral edema, heart failure and even death. Refeeding syndrome is typically diagnosed when there is a high clinical suspicion and laboratory tests show the characteristic electrolyte changes such as elevated glucose levels, hypophosphatemia, hypokalemia, and hypomagnesemia. In most cases, no other tests are needed to confirm the diagnosis. People at risk for refeeding syndrome may undergo a risk assessment before in initiating nutritional therapy. In addition, monitoring of electrolyte levels and clinical symptoms in people at risk as well as slow titration of nutritional therapy are recommended during the first 72 hours of the refeeding process. Treatment of refeeding syndrome focuses on electrolyte and vitamin supplementation as well as reduced energy intake and fluid administration. To prevent refeeding syndrome, caloric intake should be increased by only 200 to 300 kilocalories per day every 3 to 5 days until sustained weight gain is achieved at target levels. A potential trigger of refeeding syndrome is intravenous infusion of glucose prior to feeding, so this should be avoided. So dear viewers, that was all about refeeding syndrome. I hope you like this video and you find it informative. Keep sharing our videos and uh, like and subscribe to our channel Pharmacy D by Asim. And also we have given the links to our social media accounts in the description below. Go and follow us on different social media platforms as well. Thank you.